Hi, this is Father Louis Skirty with Friends of the Word. We thank you for joining us on our continuing episodes dealing with St. Catherine of Bologna, uh, both the parish, the saint, and the contributions, I should say both, or many aspects of her life, contributions to the arts, especially here at St. Catherine's of Bologna Parish in Ringwood. And Father uh, Martina Papanos, my guest, along with Father Steve Shadwell, who translated many of the works of St. Catherine from the Italian into the English. Welcome both of you once again. Rather than me tell uh, our audience why I'm holding these brochures, what, what do these brochures represent? Could you explain that? These represent uh, our effort uh, to get artists involved, since Catherine is the patron of art. So we started it, David Nisera. He was on our, active in our school as president of the uh, our school association. And he, was, he said, hey, Paul, I'd like to do something with photography. And I said, well, can't we expand it? So since Catherine's patron of art and do You see, the Holy Spirit works. Catherine, Catherine, you know, she had this with the miracle of the, she was, worked in the, uh, in Ferrara. One of her jobs was to be the baker. She baked the bread for the monastery. And um, when, you know, she just put all the nice loaves in this brick oven, on this brick oven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good stuff. <laughs> yeah, really was good stuff. And so she loaded it up, and then the bell rang for chapel. So she said, Jesus, keep an eye on it, let it bake well. So she went up to the chapel for visiting priest, and he spoke for four hours. Sweet <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, no. So... You know, once she was over, who we went a beeline, and the chapel at that time was one side of the building and the oven was on the other yes, side. In fact, yes. Catherine's room was on the second floor up over the room where the oven was. Nice and warm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. So she comes down and some of her buddies are with us, some of the sisters, and as they're getting closer to the oven. I've been through the air. I got one year on my visit, the mother abbess actually had me go to the cloister to me. <laughs> yeah, so, so as they're getting closer and closer, the snow is beautiful, the roses and something, and so when they come up, it's the best bread they ever had, one and only time. So, if you went to Ferrara today to celebrate her feast, mm -hmm. they do it the week before March 9th, her feast day, like in, in Ferrara, the sisters, they they close off some of the cloistered garden, half of it, so the people can come from the, the main church, go through the sister's garden, oh. into the door, right to the oven, that oh, part of the monastery. Wow, that's great. Yeah, and you can only, if you went there, you could only go there that week. Otherwise, you wouldn't get any further than the church. Now, that's a great introduction to who St. Catherine is. This is a picture a photo of the statue that's upstairs of St. Catherine of Bologna, and I'm holding the brochure of the 14th annual art exhibit that Father introduced on the 600th birthday of St. Catherine. So mm -hmm. let, let's get a little background now. You gave us such a juicy piece that, oh, I can smell the bread, actually. Oh, when was well, she born? She was born on September 8th, for, uh, 1413 in Bologna. And that's why she's Catherine of yes, Bologna. Yeah. Okay, um, Steve, tell us something else about her, that from her spiritual writings, and then Father can give us the, the history and the life of St. Catherine. Uh, well, Father will probably touch on it better, but you can see from her writings that she was highly educated uh, yes. for her times, yes. And I understand she was educated at the court of Ferrara. Yes, because her, her, see, her dad, well, her dad was, was, from nobility from Ferrara, and her mom was nobility from Bologna. Oh, and the two families yes, came together. Right. Right, right, and right. so the Duke of Ferrara wanted a companion for his daughter, Margaret, so he told Catherine's father, please bring Catherine up here. You know, well, she can live in the castle with Margaret. Right, right, right. And she, be, she was and, educated there. And that was, uh, Ferrara at that time was a key center yes, in, yes. In, in, in Italy, and so Anybody who was anybody came to the court, and you can go to the castle there. You can actually see where Catherine was, and That's the fantastic. rooms. You can even go down into the 
you go down to where the dungeon was, they keep the prisoners, and you see the moat, the water goes, you're going down. And wow, well, yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> you, you have a very graphic picture of Ferrara, St. Catherine, yeah. to the eyes of Monsignor Panos. That's great. Yeah, I, I hear a great love for her and, and her history. Too. Oh, yeah. Well, we were the first group of Americans ever to visit the monastery. And, the, the, and you know, so... And Even the bus driver and the guide, it was funny, I was laughing to myself as the bus, the bus driver stopping, leaning out the window, getting directions, and then, and then, <laughs> then even our escort, she had never been, so neither the bus driver or the escort had ever been with a tour to Ferrara. Sure. And this is the only parish in the United States yes. named after St. Catherine of yes. Bourbon. Fascinating. Yes. Uh, Steve, you translated. First of all, I, 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 I'm going to hit why you translated, how you translated. What was your uh, access to Italian? So, uh, um, in 1981, or in 1982, I believe, I was sent to Italy for my studies. And I lived there until 89. And then I went back again in 2003 to 2004. And in the meantime, I also lived in France. So I had a kind of a French-Italian, yeah. As priest? Uh, mostly as study and then as priest, yeah. And what were you studying? I was doing my, my all the courses for seminary. To, so, so theology. theology. My thing is in moral theology. But moral yeah. theology, great. Yeah. And you studied where in Italy? The Angelicum in Rome. Oh, right, right. 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 Then I worked for a little bit up the north in Rovereto. It's uh, up on the border there, the Austrian border. Um, and worked then in Paris. Doing what? As a priest. Okay, in oh, Paris. Very little up there, and then for about four or five years, five years in Paris as a priest. So you're fluent in Italian? Yes. English? Yes. <laughs> French? Yes. Anything else? No, I crawl. I can I can yell at Henry in Spanish. <laughs> I can, I'm, in I'm envious <laughs> of you. That's that's great. Yeah. Wow, that's fantastic. Um, okay, so how did, how did you and Father Pat get, I'm, and, and so St. Catherine get here, together? I'm sent here in 2006. Uh, I just come back from Europe. I was did a little stint at St. Michael's and Chanchi Street for the Italians. Then Father Joe came back and they had to put me somewhere. Right. So they sent me to Ringwood. And lo and behold, um, the first thing that happened, I walked in, I said, Hi, I'm Father, you know, Steve. I'm going to be your new associate. And he said, Do you know anything about St. Catherine of Bologna? <laughs> <laughs> Don't so, beat around the bush. Oh, right? no. <laughs> so seven hours later, <laughs> yeah. oh. the, the first night he tried to show me a video of the floor. Then thank no. God we had an electrical store, <laughs> the monastery floor. He had a video of the monastery floor. And it went out. We, I never had to watch that video. But anyway, so, uh, you know, just getting to know one another. Yes, he, yes, yes. He asked if I could translate some things. I said, sure, I would love to. And uh, then I, when I got the originals, um, and a lot of the originals of Catherine will come also with the translation into Italian. Because she's not pure Italian. Right. So you'll have the manuscript of her original text an Italian version of it. And I worked with both of those. Okay. About an English okay, version. Okay. So have you copyrighted your no, translations? No, I, I didn't want to, Lou. Interesting. Have you published them? N no, only for the parish. Really? Monsignor always wanted to. I told him he could without my name on it. Uh, I just didn't care for the... Uh, I, think that, I think that they should be published and publicized. Yeah. Don't keep it I mean, so pat parochial. But give us something that you've translated. So, uh, well, the last piece I read from an, uh, an episode ago or so, that was from Her Way of the Cross. And, and that, I, I remember that, that was uh, reflective of Holy Saturday, the original Holy right, Saturday. Right, mystical experience. That's a beautiful, yeah. that was a beautiful was piece. It beautiful, that yeah. was really... Then we, uh, here we have something called the, her, the Chaplet of the Joys of Mary. And these are, uh, it starts with the, the entire life of Mary and all the joyful moments in her life that she celebrates like a rosary of sorts you know so you now she's writing these she's writing these, okay yes. now which is really interesting because it shows her education because it's mi middle ages a woman you know confined not confined but but sent to the monastery right um order, order work in prayer was their job and she had the talent because of her education of writing oh, which was very high, yeah her writing style is outstanding it, 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 very qualified, you know, a very high level. And she was an artist. Yes. And some of the paintings. And a musician, you know. And oh, that's a new violin. one. She wrote a new, yeah. She, she, she wrote music. Yeah. Wow. That's the older one, the oldest violins in the world is hers. Really? Mm -hmm. Is it there in the monastery? Sure. And then for the, in the, for 
couple of, well, 600th anniversary of her birth. If they, they, they know. An the music. Or, yeah, but, oh. but uh, 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 who makes the violins, he made an exact replica of it and presented it to the sisters oh. in Ferrara. I was there with a parish group, and we were lucky. They performed an opera there, uh, based on Catherine's fighting with Satan, the devil, and wow. all the instruments were from the f 1400s. Yes. The, uh, so we were Fantastic. honored. Fantastic. You know, sisters gave us a good seat. I <laughs> bet you did. Wow. <laughs> anyway, I mean, have a good see, seat. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Again. This is no, great. No, so then, um, <laughs> I think uh, we translated, we started with a lot of prayers, because uh, Monsignor wanted to make prayer cards. For, okay. For visiting the sick. Sure. So that we had tr read that little prayer that that was part of it that we had translated. Then we went to bigger and better, to celebrate the thousand hail marys that she liked to do for Christmas time, mm -hmm. the, the chaplet of the joys of Mary, which we began. We actually had a chaplet made, didn't we, Celine? Yeah. Or, yeah. And then um, the way of the cross, and the last thing, the last I, I work I would really point out uh, as the, the biggest one was her spiritual gardens, and that was a work that. It, Tree, uh, Catherine of Bologna wrote to another sister on the, the entire spiritual life. Okay. And she envisions this as a series of passing through gardens in which each flower represents a virtue, oh, a moment, my. a transformation. I'm so visual. Growth. I see these. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And, and do you have selections from that? I don't. Okay. Unfortunately, okay. I forgot it along with my notepad of my notes. That's right. But uh, That'll give our audience uh, experience to go online and and find out more of St. Catherine of Bologna. Okay, yes, because Monsignor has uh, has a copy of it, uh, and uh, I have it now, too. Now, outside, it, there's a shrine. Yes. What, what are the steps and the bricks representative of? Oh, well, in Ferrara, it's all bricks. It's it's red, you know, Bologna, it's Bologna the red. There was mm -hmm. a little communist leaning for that aspect of redness. But then, because of the, the the nature of the bricks in Bologna, yeah. so the shrine outside this church is dedicated to Saint Catherine. Yes, yes. And what are the what are the inscriptions? Are they are they? Oh, related? the inscriptions. It's memorial bricks. But then I have on the um, on the front, I put the seven spiritual weapons. Of oh, Saint. okay. I'm mixing them up with the rosary. Okay. Yeah. 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 The, yeah, the spiritual Good. weapons was translated by someone else, though, wasn't it? Oh, oh yeah, the yeah. So. Yeah, I can I can dig it out to my papers here yes, it's another good. time. Okay. Yeah, okay, Father, give us something else that you translate. Okay, well, um, here's a the last of the joys of Mary. So you can begin with the joy, the first joy, the holy conception of Mary. But let's skip to the last joy because yeah. um, Pat kind of likes the movement going on here. So um, the the sixty third joy is this contemplate the glorious queen escorted by her beloved son past the nine choirs of angels see her exalted above all and seated by her son on a royal throne hear all singing with one voice crown her lord with a crown of, pre of precious stones and then um, she goes in to describe the crown of our lady uh, on which is a very intricate, uh, obviously mystical experience of her. On the first tier were sculpted the four cardinal virtues, justice, prudence, fortitude, and temperance. Each, each virtue was equidistant from the other and shown out in a wondrous way. On the second tier, higher than the first, were sculpted the most, in the most delicate of detail the virtues of obedience, poverty, and chastity. They had an otherworldly shine. On the third and highest tier, Sculpted with the finest of workmanship and beautifully ornate were the three theological virtues of faith, hope, and charity, each equidistant from the other. Atop was a wonderful and very ornate work of various precious stones, highlighting principally the virtue of humility. This work completed and complemented the crown and is shown out with an unimaginable beauty. And she goes on like this. Mm. But it, it, again, it's a, an experience of Mary that you won't find anywhere. No, 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 no. You know, and it's interesting now, um, I wonder, would she have read these to the community? I think she would have, yes. Because, well, I mean, you wouldn't keep them hidden. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. And no. that must have been great uh, reflections for them. Yeah. 
She, yeah. oh, she would, she would, as she abbess, would, she, yeah. oh yeah, as the as the mother abbess, she, she would, she would write, and oh yeah, she was really a, a top woman. She, she, as I said, she Very should passionate. be, yeah, oh that too. But smart, she should be a doctor of the church too, just with all the others. Now you're not a contemporary of hers, are you? <laughs> <laughs> the, the enthusiasm is unbelievable. Oh my gosh, yes. yeah, yeah, that's great. How many trips have you made to Bologna? Uh, well, I, the first one was Father Roy in '94, and I think almost every year since. I, if I don't, well, since I've not been in the parish anymore, I, I don't have trips. Once why I run trips, but right. otherwise I go by myself, just a Bologna and Ferrari, even though I don't speak Italian. But after all those trips, yeah. and, and Mangala you, got, you guys you know, teach him anything. He gets around. <laughs> he does get around. Well, I have, you, well, know, you know I why? Have These things. <laughs> yeah. He talks with his hands. The sisters love him. Too. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> He's the face Although of the cherub. a couple of them have died now. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, and we, oh, yeah. But, but I do that just to keep the contact with the, the sisters. Yes. And I've gone through different mother episodes in both monasteries. But this way, when people go there, all they have to do... When it's closed to the pub, they ring the doorbell on, and even if they don't speak Italian like me, all I do is just mention my name. Oh, Father Beth! <laughs> they, they speak a little English, and they go and tell them to, when, it, when the chapel, her chapel is closed to the public, it gets open for them. That's <laughs> fantastic. That's fantastic. Yeah, so We're here at St. Catherine of Bologna Parish in Ringwood, New Jersey, sharing some of the beautiful aspects of her life, St. Catherine of Bologna, with Father Steve Shadwell, who translated many of her prayers from the Latin Italian to English, and Monsignor Pat Panos, who's absolutely in love with St. Catherine. This is a picture of the statue that's upstairs. And he was pastor for how many years? 22 years. Oh, 22 years. So he knows Catherine in and out, right? Yeah. One last word to our, our audience about St. Catherine. <laughs> One less word. <laughs> he can't. He can't limit it. No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, give us a sentence. Uh, well, all right. With the um, with the bread, so uh, they stamp the bread. The sisters every year in Ferrara they bake it, and then they send off a batch to Bologna. They make little hosts. They're about. They're about. They're about that big. Hosts. Right. Yeah. Uh, bread, a little, you know, yeah. and then they stamp it with Catherine, a, a, a statue of St. Catherine. Oh, that's beautiful. And so the people can come during the celebration, week celebration, and they can get the little bag of the bread so they have a part of sure, St. Catherine, sure, her feast, sure. and they can do with it as they want. So when I was there the first time, I was to Ferrar for the, um, for the, uh, the celebration. I actually stayed, the sisters put me up for a week in the monastery, one of their guest rooms. I got all my news. I had a key work. to the door, I could come and go. But anyway, anyway, um, what the Mother Abbess did, she's now, was then from there she went to Mother Abbess in Ferrar, and now she's still in Ferrar, but she's not the Mother Abbess anymore. She got a suitcase, like one of those suitcases in um, Sound of Music where she yes. is going home. And so, Mother. She gets, Mother Francesca, she gets this suitcase and she f fills it up with all the hosts, so I, the bread, so I can bring them back to oh, our parish for our, their great. celebration. And so as she's given me this suitcase, I could see the sister whose suitcase it was, because you know the movie Sound of Music, when she, go, she leaves and comes with her suitcase, you know, the sister sees her suitcase going out the door. Go with this crazy American. <laughs> I felt so bad, so what, what I did one day during the week, I said, hmm, I went out to a luggage store in Ferrara, because I had the key to the place, I could yes, tell them, yes. and I bought a nice little overnight bag, uh, and so I presented to the sisters after supper one night, and the, the oldest sister there, the one who smoked the cigar Scarred and everything. <laughs> <laughs> she was something of it. She, 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 and I presented to the sisters through the group. She's, you can see she turns to the sister's expensive. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess. So what, 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 what I did, though, on, the, on my next trip back, I, of course, I brought the suitcase back. I just loaded up it. with papers. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and, and now every time I go there, 
you know, when Sister Seaton, whatever she's doing, she eventually, whenever this we have a little get together, she always makes sure she comes in just. To, so, <laughs> well, know. that was his last word about Saint Catherine. Uh, Father Steve, can you close with a prayer of Saint Catherine? Sure. And before uh, Steve does that, I'd like we're going to close with uh, Father Steve's prayer from Saint Catherine of uh, Bologna. We thank you for joining us. These episodes have been here at St. Catherine of Bologna Church in Ringwood, New Jersey. And in 2013, they celebrated the, 20th, the 14th anniversary of the art show, but the 600th anniversary of her birthday. And these art shows continue through St. Catherine's, and you can see that on, on their website. We're going to close. I'd like to hear from you, Father Lou Skurdy at Hotmail.com. And we're going to close with Father Steve reading one of the prayers composed by St. Catherine of Bologna and translated by Father Steve. So, uh, what I'm going to do is just adapt to this final exhortation of Catherine. Mm -hmm. Therefore, recommend yourself to the Most Blessed Virgin Mary. Ask for all the virtues that shine in her crown. Beseech her the grace to follow her inasmuch as your fallen nature and human frailty will permit, that following in the footsteps of her holy life, we will have her as our advocate, with all our hearts, we must praise and glorify her, and reverently, on bended knee, hail her, Mary, full of grace. Amen. God bless you, Steve. Yeah, thank you. Love thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. And thank you.